In this screencast, I'm going to take a piece of code that I, I covered in a previous video, which generates a um, probability density approximation of a probability density for a normal distribution by sampling using MATLAB's random number generator RAND n. Uh, so, and what I'm what I'll do with that is fit that treat that as data and fit the normal distribution's density, the Gaussian function, to that uh, data. Okay, so this is essentially a co the code that I, I wrote in that previous video, a little bit modified, so I clear the workspace of all previous variables, and I clear the figure, raise the figure one, clear it, and put a hold on it, and then I starting here with a small sample, and I want to show you in this video what happens as you increase the sample size to the ability, the quality of the fit, and then I'm here I'm defining what the normal distribution is. So I'm doing a normal distribution with a mean of 2 and a standard deviation of 14, and this is the way we generate it. Uh, so this normal, normal is going to be a vector containing a whole bunch of samples from the normal distribution. And then this section here is where I calculate a histogram that is an approximation for the density. And so the bar graphs that I get will be an approximate density. And now down here I calculate an x vector for all the x positions that I'm going to plot that density. And I use, this one is exactly the density that we use to generate the data, but obviously the data is not going to be a perfect rep representation. And so I'll plot it, and it won't look exactly like it, but it'll look pretty close. So let me run that just to remind you what that looks like. And this is actually quite rough because n is small in this case, only 100. Uh, if I increase to 1,000, you can see that it tightens up very nicely. But let's leave it as 100 for now. And now what I want to do is I want to show you how we can treat this graph. Let's say the you can think of the coordinates of the tips of every one of these blue bars as being a data point, and I want to fit a curve just like I've got here, but I want to get that um, that fit from a fitting routine. And so I'm going to pretend I don't know what the sigma and mu values are, and I'm going to define a function that I'm going to use to call uh, what, what's called nlin fit, so that's for nonlinear fitting routine. So first let's define the function for the Gaussian, and that's going to be using MATLAB's ampersand notation. So in MATLAB you can't write something like this, x of, uh, sorry, f of x mu and sigma, which would be normal, uh, which would be normal function notation. What we do instead is we write the f equal on that side, and then over here we have an ampersand, and we let it know that it's a function by saying the at sign or the ampersand. And then in the brackets, we list out the things that are going to go in there. Now, in order to pass this on to nlin fit, what we have to do is we have to put all the parameters into a single vector p, and the argument of the function x as a second vector there. And then we can put the formula for the Gaussian next. And now this tells the function that p is a vector of parameters and x is the argument that you were going to put into the function. And that means we have to replace sigma and mu by the elements of p. So it needs just a single item that it passes back and forth. So I'm going to take mu to be the first entry in p, so p of 1 and sigma will be p of 2, and sigma will be p of 2 again down here. And now this defines the function that we're interested in. So um, here, well, let me just, uh, oh, the one other thing that I did, I added this to the plot, which thickens up the line so it's a little bit easier to see. Uh, so we'll do another plot here, and um, this one I'll, uh, well, actually, first what we need is a, a guess at what the p value is, or the p values are, mu and sigma. So I'm just going to roughly say, well, you know, if I look at this graph, 
it looks to me like maybe it's it's centered at zero. So I'll give a mu value of zero as my guess. And then it looks like it spreads about maybe 10. So a standard deviation of about 10. And that's my guess. So uh, what I'll do first is just plot that guess um, as a density. So I'm going to do a plot of x. And now I have to plug in p guess into f as my first argument there. And the second argument is x, the variable. And then I'll plot this as y with y with a line width of three, so it's easier to see. All right, so that's the syntax for specifying the line width of a plot. Uh, why, well, yellow, that's not so bright. Let's put in, uh, say, black. K is black. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Yeah, so okay, it's, um, it's not great. Uh, but then the data isn't all that great, so it's not that surprising. Um, so by eyeball, that was... Oh, I see, before I had the 10,000 in there. Yeah, it would have been very hard to get any better than about 0 and 10 for this one. Okay, so that's not what I want to do. I don't want to manually fiddle and change these numbers. Instead, we're going to use something called nlin fit. So I'm going to just comment out... Actually, maybe I'll just delete this line. And what we're going to do now is we're going to use this function nlin fit, which will automatically pick a p-value. So I give it a first p-value and it sends that p-value off with the function and it compares it to the data and then it will return some information back to the function and then it'll do an improvement on that. So it's using some kind of um, uh, iterative algorithm to find the minimum. And you can look that up if you do a help and then fit. And it'll tell you all sorts of information, but I won't go into that here. You see there's a whole bunch of parameters you can set if it's not working properly. If we're lucky, this will work right away. It's just a pretty simple problem. Uh, to only two parameters to be fit. So let's try doing the fit. So, um, so the output of the fit is a set of parameters that are the best fit to the data. And we write down nlin fit of... And then the first entry is the x coordinates of the um, of the data, and that's the position of the bars. And then the next is the heights of those bars. And you remember we calculated the heights of those bars. We normalized the bar heights that were given by the original histogram, which is frequencies, not density. And then we normalized it to get the density so that the integral was 1. So those are the y values, the densities, or the density. And then the third argument is the function that we've defined that, that this nlin fit is going to keep on using over and over to iteratively improve on its estimate of p, the mu and the sigma value. And then the last thing we pass it is our first guess, so it has a place to start working. And so we are set to go here. Oh, except I can, instead of just seeing the p fit drop out, I won't put a semicolon, so that means that at the end of the, when the code is finished running, I should see a p fit value drop out over here, and hopefully the values will be close to 2 and 14, but we'll see if, if we do that well. And now I'm going to plot it, so I'll type a plot. And we have an x already defined and an f of, and now we want to plot it with p fit common x. And then uh, let's plot this one in green, let's say, and with a line width again of 3. All right, and so let's see how we do with this n equal 100. Oh, whoops. I missed a comma there. All right, let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so it's a really, uh, really noisy set of data. Um, and you can see that the ideal is the red one, and our approximation to it is the green one, which is not bad, but it's not surprising that it's not great because of what the data looks like. So let's go up by, let's say, a factor of five with the data and see what happens. 
looking a little bit better. They're getting much tighter together. And let's go to a thousand. Even better, I would say. And by the time we get up to 10,000, which is the scale we were at before, you can see that they're getting quite close. And let me just, I'm already in zoom mode. I'll zoom in here. This is where it looks the furthest apart. And through the rest of it, it looks quite good. Okay, so there are methods and statistics for determining you know, how well we would do and how well we would expect to do based on our n size, but I won't go into that. I'll leave it at this, and this will uh, be a useful technique, this n-lin fit for fitting all sorts of data, whether it's from real data, experimental data, or this type of simulated data that we're doing here using random number generation. Um, and so we're fitting some function f to that data, and this can be used for all sorts of uh, problems like this. Okay, and that's all for this example.